हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल महागुरु यश आर्किटेक्चर क्लासेस सो बेसिकली वी स्टार्टेड आर प्रिपरेशन फॉर गेट एंड वी स्टार्टेड बाय सॉल्विंग आर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर्स एंड राइट नाउ वी आर सॉल्विंग गेट 2018 एटीन एंड वी आर वी हैव कम्प्लीट आर क्वेश्चन टिल ट्वेंटी नाइन एज आई टोल्ड यू आई वोट बी डिस्कसिंग जनरल एप्टीट्यूड क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल द मटेरियल्स विच आई बी शोइंग यू have been have a link down in the description box so let's get back to it <coughs> so question number 30 so you have different building components elements and building components are given so you have to match which building component which element is part of which of the balling component so you have a king post grade beam metal decking and jam <coughs> so let us see what these terms means so a king post so king post is a type of a truss you can see this is a king post truss you have uh, struts and a king post you have rafters led this way so you have your raft so if you have if this is your roof elements which are laid this way are known as rafters and you have your purlins laid across it that is why you can see purlins in your sectional face so this loads on a wall here and there is a wall plate so you have a principal rafter which is the main rafter which forms the truss <coughs> and the truss is being covered with common rafters it's like a covering thing the next which is known is a grade beam a grade beam is a beam which runs below the wall on the plinth level <coughs> so what happens is you have your two columns laid down okay and you have a wall so where will this wall rest so this wall rest on a beam grade beam which runs through these uh, columns on the plinth level so here uh, instead of a column you uh, a pile or a pile is shown so it can be a pile or a column <coughs> so you know that pile is used in case of uh black soil and another case you use <coughs> your column method the next is uh, metal decking so metal decking is used for creating your intermediate floors where you can see metal decking is uh, in case of auditorium the up uh, the the stage above the stage area you have metal metal decked uh, floors where uh, uh, catwalks are created <coughs> and the la the next is jam so jam is for doors so this you can see you have a door or the door frame so this door frame is known as your jam uh see for curtain window i've taken curtain window because curtain window is a very <coughs> recent building component been used so this is a typical uh, photo for a curtain window its component you have glass pa glass uh, portions <coughs> you have horizontal transom and vertical members known as mullions the so horizon the vertical members which hold the glass are known as mullions and the vertical sorry the vertical sections which hold the glass are known as mullions and the horizontal sections are known as transoms <coughs> so the next question you have uh, some iconic architectural examples of buildings and see what kind of structural system do they have so first is santa maria de fiora also known as the florence cathedrals in florence made by brunelleschi it has a double dome okay the next is so this be uh, belongs to a roman roman buildings roman architecture the next is notre dame in paris so this is a part of gothic buildings where flying buttresses were used so how does a flying buttress look you have a building and then you uh, this is supported by a <coughs> buttress which has an arch 
so arches because arches were used because arches are a good compressive member in a building and this is known as a flying arch also known as buttresses flying buttresses the next is bahai temple so anyone who would uh, just uh, hear the word bahai temple they would be confused but bahai temple is none other than your lotus temple by faribur saba and we can easily see that it is a shell structure one important thing to notice is in a very earlier question i guess 2003 or 4 <coughs> the question was how many petals does this lotus temple have and the answer is 9 <coughs> okay just a thing to remember the next is olympic arena in tokyo by kendo tang you can see this is a suspended roof so we know what a shell is you have no uh, suspended roof a space frame you can see an example for space frame uh, <coughs> can be a geodesic geodesic dome as well we've seen double walled uh, double walled dome in santa maria and you have a flying buttress in all greek architecture next to see so you have a list of building materials and some distinct property you have steel cement wood and glass here and charring brittle evaporation tensile strength and setting time here <coughs> so cement would obviously have the property of setting steel would obviously have a setting uh, a property of tensile strength glass is brittle and then you have wood for wood you have only two options left charring or evaporation evaporation cannot happen so the answer would be charring so what charring happens is uh, charring is defined it is the process of lightly applying open flame to wood plank to char the surface of the board the charred exterior helps to weatherproof the siding and act as a uh, deterrent to insects so what has you take a wooden log or wooden plank and you burn not to burn but you <coughs> apply an open flame so what happens is during a open flame when it is applied a black layer is formed so this black layer would uh, weather proof the structure <coughs> and keep the insects away next is you have some built forms given and its descriptions are given so you have agora ziggurat mastaba and synagogue and what does the meaning are given so as we know from very your history of architecture one you know, which is study in first semester which is agora so agora was uh, was there in greek architecture so when i say greek so agora is stands for a market place or a public square and an example of agora for greece is this in greece is this the next is ziggurat so ziggurat was seen in uh, mesopotamian architecture so what happens is uh, it is looks like this so it is a type of a massive structure built in ancient mesopotamia so answer would be built in diminishing stages of masonry with buttress wall so what happens is your <coughs> terrace get uh, smaller and smaller and they are being uh, supported by uh, buttressed wall and masonry next is mastaba so mastaba was the earlier uh, tom uh, in egyptian architecture before uh, mastaba so before uh, uh, what is the pyramids mastaba was a uh, egyptian was used for an egyptian tomb okay uh the next is zig uh, synagogue so synagogue is basically a place for jewish worship okay yeah <coughs> the next question you have some building configuration uh, characteristics and what does they mean so there is a there is a term reentrant corner so what does a reentrant corner means uh that is you have any corner like this so this corner which forms an angle from 0 to 180 degree celsius have an internal load and load from here so because of these two load there are stress concentration at this point which lead to cracks formed in this direction <coughs> so what done is what is done is to uh, reduce this uh, stresses a 2 meter long 
uh, steel is being reinforced. So what happens is all the loads is then uh, taken up by the steel. The next is floating column. So what does a floating floating column mean? So floating column is a column which does not have a base which goes down to the uh, down to the footing. So this column has a would have a footing and goes up to the vertical part. But this column doesn't have a column below it. So it is floating on the slab. That is why this is known as a floating column. But this won't be called a floating column because it has already has a column. <coughs> so floating column does not depend how many columns does it have below. It shouldn't have any column below it. <coughs> so what does a column do is vertically transfers the load down. So at this point it is not able to transfer the vertically load down. That is why it would be known as floating column. Similarly this would be known as a floating column and this won't be called as a floating column. So due to a floating column there would be a stress con uh, there would be <coughs> load path discontinuity because the load is load path is down and then again <coughs> and then there is no load. The next term is irregular story stiffness and the answer is soft story. <coughs> so let us see uh, so you have a building <coughs> and you have multiple floors and all floors have different heights if in this example see so this story would be known as a heavy story because it is storing a lot of mass and these would be known as a soft story similarly in this if this has some service floor or something it will have a more mass and some examples from in the <coughs> this, these are all types of irregularity in a building the column is irregular the wall is irregular okay and the next one is gap between adjacent buildings will be pounding. What pounding is you have uh, two buildings like this adjacent to each other. <coughs> Sometimes what happens is due to some structural failure this might just fall on this building on the adjacent building. This falling of the adjacent building on the other building is known as pounding. The next question <coughs> is from landscape you have some terms given and their description the first is zeriscaping so zeriscaping is done in uh, desert areas where you have very limited water so water is done <coughs> so you plant so you water the plants in such a way that very little water is done given or no water is given the next is drip line so drip line is basically the outermost surface Sorry. Just a minute, I guess I have to take the wrong answer. Let me check. 35. 35A. Yeah, 35 is A. Drip line basically refers to the outermost circumference of a tree can canopy. So if you see a drip, a tree canopy like this, so water would be dripping like this. Okay, so this circumference is known as a drip line. Then you have swale. So swale is basically <coughs> uh, the swale. I have a definition for swale. A swale is a shady spot or a sunken or a marshy place. In particular, it is a shallow channel within the jelting slope. So any sunken or a marshy place is known as swale. So R1 R, R, for a wide, <coughs> it's a wide vegetated drain. Obviously, any marshy land with swamp, which is swampy that means it's a kind of a drain and when a drain has gone down there's a lot of vegetation occurring and the next is turf block <coughs> so a turf block looks like this so basically turf block is used so that the upper uh, topmost uh, valuable soil is not eroded and in, so if you put a cement road the water won't be able to percolate down and this would create led to runoff <coughs> so why, what we can do is use turf block pair it has two up do good things <coughs> you can use your uh, top soil for vegetation uh, it would not ruin it because of the runoff and also you are adding up to the groundwater level
<coughs> the next question is different uh, planning principles are given and the discussion has been provided the first is transit oriented development <coughs> so what does a transit oriented development aim to have is you all have your spaces around you in such a walkable distance so you try to have all your uh, different kinds of uh, uh, uses of a uh, land in a walkable distance so a compact and a wa walkable mixed use development <coughs> then there is a core periphery theory so basically it is a four stage model of regional development <coughs> so let us see what the four stages are let's have a first stage you have two villages in competition for development okay the second phase is due to many uh, you can say many attributes or many कारणों से ये वाला जो हमारा सिटी है वो डेवलप हो पा रहा है इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस अब क्या होगा जब ये वाला वेन दिस सिटी इज डेवलपिंग ऑल द सिटीज और द स्मॉलर क्रस्टर्स will try to depend on this so it is getting dependent so this is the third phase where sit the uh, the nearby areas are getting dependent on this and then the fourth phase when the city is properly functioning with the other suburban areas <coughs> okay so the next is cluster uh, next is bid rent theory so what does a bid rent theory says is change of land prices with relative distance from the cbt <coughs> so you have a so uh, bid rent theory was based on the concentric city dweller city so you have a concentric city so you have cbd in between you have a transition phase you have a worker class then you have the residential zone and then you have the periphery area so you can see is when you move <coughs> outwards from the cbd area obviously your land would be getting cheaper and from your basic economic and general knowledge you can say that <coughs> any land which is closer to a business district rate or any market is costlier than any from a residential area so what this bid rent theory says is as you move <coughs> outwards from the central business district toward your residential areas your uh, rent starts decreasing and the last is a cluster theory so the cluster theory is a theory of strategy by alfred marshall in his book of principles of economics which categorizes clusters as a concentration of specialized industries in particular lo localities or so known as the industrial districts so what happens you have a city and you have different small small clusters and these small clusters have some industrial might have some industrial output as in obviously you have industries <coughs> set outside your uh, city core area on the peripheral region so that there will be a small region or a cluster of space which forms a industrial district outside the city <coughs> the next is uh, you have cities and their planners given so for your help i have created <coughs> a list of cities and their planners so the islamabad have been planned by doxy doxyades tel aviv by patrick gades which have all who have also given the neighborhood concept bhubneshwar is by o koines burger and <coughs> o koines burger has a huge uh, contribution in climate climatography or climatology <coughs> uh, Br uh, brasilia by lucia costa and he has designed the city in a form of a flight so something like this a bird flying then you have oroville by roger anger chandigarh chandigarh by lee corbusier and you, he divided the roads into seven uh, stages you have durgapur by joseph allenstein and bejambek polk gandhinagar is by hk mevda and m apte kolkata by job charnok new delhi so new delhi is by latins okay vidyadhar nagar is by bv doshi it is a very old part which is in jaipur navi mumbai by charles korea horizon city by lucio costa 
पैरिस बाय वोजॉ और लंडन बाय एर एन एन एबर कॉम्बी फिलाडेल्फिया बाय लुई कान रैडबन इन न्यू जर्सी बाय क्लारेंसटीन एंड हेनरी राइट एंड टोक्यो बाय केंदो तांगे सो लेट एस सी यू हैव डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ टेम्पल्स एंड टू विच डायनेस्टिक पीरियड डज इट बिलोंग टू यू हैव टू गेस इट राइट और यू टू आंसर इट राइट सो यू हैव बृहदेश्वर टेम्पल बाय चोलास You have Kailashna Temple by Pallava. Pallava. So in uh, so Pallava, I've also done the Rathas of Mahabalipuram, which is rock cut, and also your uh, Shor temples. Okay. Then you have Bhitragao Temple by Guptas in the northern region, and fi- finally the Latkan Temple by the Chalukyas. Okay. Let's. Move on to the next question. <coughs> so you have uh, the list of buildings, and you have to see the who has architect uh, and the name the architect. The famous Gaganayam Museum in in Bilbao by Franco Gori. The first Gaganayam Museum was uh, made by Ethel Wright. Then you have the shards in London by Renzo Piano. You have the Commerce Bag in Frankfurt, Germany by Norman Foster, and the Hyder Ali Center in Baku by Zaha Adit. Let us see what other uh, options were given. Was Richard Rogers. So Richard Rogers, I'll uh, just tag in some pictures of the uh, some buildings by Richard Rogers and uh, give it to you. <coughs> the last question is. Uh, the last question for today is: You have different conservation techniques given, and what does it simplify has been given. So, what does restoration mean? So, restoration uh, means you try to conserve the building. So, how do you conserve? You try to put the uh, so you have a building. So, instead of ruining it, you try to keep the building in its initial phase or its previous stage. That is why returning to the previous stage. The next is reconstitution. What happens is, <coughs> uh, the example for reconstitution can be uh, Abu Simbel in Egypt. So what happens when uh, the dam was created? Uh, Abu Simbel was getting uh, affected. So what people de- uh, did it, they dismantled it piece by piece and they remantled it on an other f- uh, on a higher terrain. That is why. That is piece by piece reassembly. <coughs> Then there is reconstruction. Reconstruction means recreation of vanished elements. As in, some part of the building is missing. You make it artificially or in in modern technique, and then keep it at that same position so that the urban not the urban fabric the the natural form of the building is not <coughs> cut up. The last is replication. As the word says, you try to copy. So it is the representation of an exact copy. So guys, this is it for today. We've uh, completed twelve question number forty, and just fifteen questions are left, which would be covered in the next one or two videos. So thank you for watching this video. And if you got any doubts <coughs> or any questions, please uh, write. write it up to my email id or we can discuss it in the comment box down down below and i will i'll be linking all these material in the description box below you can find the link there and please do like comment and share and thank you for watching me